Thomas was born, we did everything fast. He was the fifth child of our, of six. And uh, born on a stormy night in November, uh, I came home from work and it was, it was time to go to the hospital. I got to the counter and everything just went crazy. So basically, uh, within 20 minutes time we got there, it was all done. Thomas was here. He was our family comedian. He was just, he didn't have to try because he could make anything hilarious. He was kind of the pivot often, especially with his sisters. He had four sisters who doted on him. They doted on him wherever Thomas was they wanted to be and they made sure Thomas had what he needed. He would go run by them what he was wearing. Oh, does that look good enough? And of course they'd give their input. He loved to laugh. I mean, he could walk into a room and he would just light up that whole room. You know, as soon as she came in, he, you know, he just, you couldn't keep your eyes really off of him when, when he walked into a room. I mean, he was just, um, he lit it up. He was also adventurous. He loved airplanes, going fast, and most of all, running. At St. Pete Academy, he came into his own as an accomplished athlete. Thomas loved the personal challenge and discipline of running. One big inspiration for him was Steve Prefontaine, and um, he used a lot of his inspirational quotes to kind of get him through some of the hardships with track. He would uh, tell me about his one of his favorite movies, which was uh, Chariots of Fire, and he would quote the runner, when I run, I feel God's pleasure. At every track meet, I was always, wow, look at it. You know, that kid from St. Beat is so effortless when he's running, and it really was. I mean, it was almost like he was gliding around the track. Being a small private high school, St. Bede lacked the funds for a proper track and field facility. But despite training on the school's parking lot, Thomas went on to win two Illinois state titles. Pure natural talent. I mean, he had the body, he had the physique for it. And to put his determination and motivation behind that, he was unstoppable. It was just to watch him run. Uh, I don't know if you could have picked an actor to play Tommy that would look any better. <laughs> More handsome than Tommy was, but I can say he had such a great smile, he had a great face, just a great kid, and when he ran and all came together, you just had to sit back and watch it. For him to go on to not only set records individually and as a team, but also then to medal down at the state track meet was an incredible accomplishment. I think it's always amazing to, not even just Thomas, you know, at the state level, but any athlete before that at St. Beat Academy is able to accomplish anything at the state level because what they have to do just to get there versus any other track athlete that doesn't have that kind of facility is, is remarkable. And I don't think that maybe anybody at the state track meet could appreciate what that team did and what, what Thomas did as an individual. Driven, coachable, passionate. He was he was controlled and smooth about it, but he was such a competitor that the slightest thing, if it didn't go the way he wanted, it, it, it was it wasn't good enough. Thomas loved to run, but he also wanted to serve others. After high school, he attended Valley Forge Military College, Embry Riddle Aeronautical University, and entered the United States Marine Corps. He achieved his dream to become a Marine pilot. The day that Thomas became a Marine and received the Eagle, Globe, and Anchor uh, meant so much to him. He was, uh, he, when it was presented to him, he told me he held it in his hand like he never held anything so precious, like a precious stone. He says, Dad, I'm a Marine. It was a day that, you know, it was, it was another accomplishment for him. Even with a busy training schedule, Thomas found time to run. Often, his thoughts returned to St. Bede and student athletes training without proper facilities. Getting a track built at St. Bede became a personal mission for Thomas. Understanding that my success in college and in the Marine Corps is much attributed to my experience in track, I would like to see the student runners afforded the same benefits. Obvious to anyone, the major disadvantage the SBA runners have, in comparison to their competition, is a lack of a training facility. Creating a fundraising campaign to build a track on the grounds of St. Bede has often crossed my mind. He emailed me once about the importance of it all and how we lack the facilities. We started focusing on what can we do to, to get a track here. 
when he spoke, I, he had such passion for it and he was so convincing. And you'd sit there and he'd tell you about like what track did for him and just listening to him, it was just like, yeah, like why hasn't this been done? It's so simple, it's just a track, you know? Yeah, of course, let's do it. Training at St. Beat Academy without an actual track is pretty tough. Just running on the asphalt, even with your best running shoes, it's going to cause problems. Asphalt is horrible for your legs. A lot of us get shin splints. We use our parking lot as our track, so we're constantly dodging cars and worrying about if we're going to slip on the gravel, making sure we're not falling. I remember him being like, you know, Mary, what it was like. I mean, we sat there and ran around the track and we got shin splints. And he's like, you know, I just think if we got this, how they would be given the resources that we never had and how, you know, they can excel even more than, you know, we ever dreamed of. You know, I thought it was hysterical that his high school track coach, I'll never forget this, he came to his high school graduation and he brought with him a piece of the asphalt parking lot and gave it to him as part of his graduation gift. Yeah, <laughs> it's beautiful. Oh, man. He thought it was, you know, funny that here his coach brings him a piece of the parking lot. But um, at the same time, you know, I'm sure he kind of thought that, you know, hopefully, you know, the coach doesn't have to keep bringing his athletes pieces of the parking lot. Hopefully sometime, maybe, you know, they'll be able to actually have a track. I gave that to Tommy. I, I guess I always wanted Tommy to remember where he came from and not to forget too easily. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> I know that meant the world to him. I feel that piece of asphalt. I don't know, it was like a, um, I mean, in hindsight, it was like a profound gift because, um, you know, just looking at that, that piece of parking lot, what um, he went through to accomplish his goals, what also Thomas felt that he wanted to do for the future students of St. Beat. For the first time, we are hearing from the families of two local Marines killed in a fiery helicopter crash at Camp Pendleton. 37-year-old Captain Jeffrey Bland and 27-year-old First Lieutenant Thomas Heitman died Monday during a training flight. A skilled pilot and decorated Marine, Bland enlisted in 97 and served two tours in Iraq. He was training First Lieutenant Thomas Heitman on Monday at Camp Pendleton when their Cobra helicopter crashed in thick brush. Lieutenant Heitman, one of six children and a record-breaking athlete in high school. They always talked about a smile. They always said that uh, Thomas had a million-dollar smile that could draw people to him. His draw to the Marine Corps? He loved what the Marines stand for, you know, always a Marine. Uh, you're, you're never ex-Marine, you're always a Marine. As Heitman and Bland's parents try to cope, Bland's wife may lean on their little girl. And the investigation has showed us that it was a bird strike that hit the PCL links, which in turn uh, was the demise of the helicopter. The helicopter came down in three pieces, and that's how, that's how, we, lost, that's how we lost Thomas. I feel like now as a family, I feel like now as a family we're trying to help him fulfill his vision. I guess really to honor him and help that vision come true, because why wouldn't we after some, you know, he was an example of true self selflessness really and someone that would help. I mean, I know he helped me and, you know, everyone, anyone that encountered Thomas, you could see. When I first heard about Thomas Heitman and learned about his dream of having a track, and as a runner, that meant the world to me. It, it really was a special thing to realize that a fellow runner had that dream of actually being able to have a track at our school. To start a project like this, you know, fundraising for a track, uh, it's hard. We are in hopes of raising as much money as we can to you know, make this dream come true. Thomas achieved insurmountable goals, and so we feel that uh, we'll, we'll try to do the same. To 
set those records, to maintain those records over this time. Maybe those will fall because Tom is, is getting his track built here, where, uh, where we'll be able to train 12 months out of the year. Um, but you know what? I don't think he'd be any happier um, than seeing his record fall to, to a student athlete who benefited from the training facility that he provided for us uh, than Tom Heitman.